Welcome, this is module 9 of our skincare formulation course. After module 10, we will be starting our practical course, our practical classes where you get to see all that I have been teaching you come to life. Our module 10 course is all about um, how to calculate your, how to develop a formula and calculate in percentage. Today, we will be talking about the basic equipment you'll be needing uh, when starting a cosmetic formulation business. So these are just the, the equipment I've put together that you that you need to start small if you can afford to buy the big ingredients at once why not but i'd advise you start with uh smaller ingredients and then you can buy the big ones as you scale okay so first now this is a precise scale note i said a precise scale so you want a, a scale that can measure uh, from 0 0.01 and above. Note I said 0 0.01. This is because as a beginner, some of the, uh, you'll be making products in small batches and sometimes you might need to, uh, you, the weight of an ingredient in your formulation might be 0, 0.0 something maybe 0 0.02 or 0 0.03 and you just you since you need to measure to the t so it makes sense that you get a precise scale okay so the, uh that is that secondly you'd need a thermometer because we'll be adding some ingredients at cool down phase and for some ingredients we'll be eating it up to to dissolve it and then sometimes we don't want the ingredient to get too hot right so you need a thermometer also when you're adding ingredients to the cool down phase which is below 40 degrees celsius you cannot determine that by feeling the by feeling the product or just by looking at it you need to use a thermometer to determine the temperature of the product the third is a double boiler so you don't really need to buy a double boiler you can improvise so like you can see number three image is the double boiler but you can use a small pot in your kitchen and kind of um the beaker that is con that your raw material the raw material you like to dissolve is containing you can put the beaker in the pot, then add a little bit of water and then put it on your cooker. So it is the water in the big pot that is going to help dissolve the content of your, that is going to help dissolve the content of your beaker. I don't know if you guys understand but when we start our formulation i'm going to be doing a, an example of this so you can understand how to do a double boiler without buying buying a double boiler then fourth we have pipette so when you want to measure ingredients like essential oils or vitamin e oil because sometimes your vitamin e oil the highest usage rate is 1% and 2% for some vitamin E. And so let's say you are making a sample batch of 30 grams. 1% of 30 grams is really, really small, right? So you need to use your pipette to measure that out. Then also use your pipette to add uh, sodium hydroxide solution and lactic acid into your products when you want to uh, reduce the pH. So that is that four pipettes. Then for the fifth one, you need a spatula, a silicone spatula, guys. I've seen so many people use wooden spoons for formulation. That is completely wrong. And also using a stainless steel spoon works, but it is um, 
it cannot really help you scrape the sides of your container kind of. So you should use a silicone spatula. So it makes sense for you to invest in a silicone spatula. I love to collect spatulas, by the way. They're just so pretty and they have just so many different colors. So I'll say you should get a silicone spatula, possibly a 100% silicone spatula. Like I can see this spatula is silicone and wood, but you shouldn't use wooden utensils when making skincare product you should use stainless steel glass or silicone spatula so you can either buy a silicone spatula for stirring or you buy a glass rod i'll be showing you that probably in the next slide your sixth is a food mixer so i'm sure some of us are familiar with this we use it to to um bake when baking cakes to mix the batter so you need this food mixer for products that you need to mix on low share. So we'll be discussing, I'll be telling you what you need to mix for low share. We low share when we get there, but you need the hand mixer. Also, you'll be needing a stick blender. So it's kind of like a stick and you just dip it into your, your product and then blend. I'm sure some of us are, should be familiar with this kind of blender and better still as a beginner i would say instead of buying a hand mixer a food mixer and a stick blender differently i would say you should buy uh the image on picture eight it is uh it is, you have like a detachable whisk and a detachable uh stick blender so you should kind of you can kind of buy like the image on the, like the eight image instead of buying a hand mixer and a stick blender separately. So moving swiftly on, next we have a beaker. You need glass beakers. Never use, uh, never use, um, um, never use utensils that you regularly use in your kitchen for for cosmetics right it makes sense for you to have a separate um separate separate uh, equipment for skincare so you need a glass beaker to measure out stuff you also need a petri dish petri dish so number 10 is a petri dish you also need a petri dish to to measure stuff so for example let's say you want to measure vitamin b3 powder it makes sense that you measure everything separately. If you measure everything all in one bowl, if you over pour, it's going to be difficult for you to get, uh, take out the excess if you already have other ingredients in a bowl. So that is the use of a Petri dish. Then stainless steel. So for making skincare, I would say you should use glass or stainless steel. They are specially made plastics for um for making cosmetic products right but i'll uh natural i'll generally say you should always make use of glass or stainless steel bowls so number 12 is me trying to looking for a picture of a rod but i couldn't find so the uh glass stick inside the 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 beaker is a rod so you can also have a rod with a rod is used in stirring your ingredients, right? So if you're trying to dissolve an ingredient, instead of dipping your silicone spatula into the pipe, uh, into the beaker, which might not be big enough, which might not be big enough to contain the silicone spatula, you can just use your rod to kind of like stir it and it's always so cute. Then number 13, you always need to have a nose mask and... And the air net, you need to cover your hair, you need to cover your nose. This is very important. 14 is an apron, obviously. We all need an we need an apron when um formulating skincare products or cosmetic products, just in case something pours on you, right? It doesn't affect your dress or whatever you're wearing. Or if it's something that is corrosive, you have at least uh, a uh, barrier protecting your skin and extra layer and 
you should kind of have like a pocket, uh, like a, uh, you should kind of, you should kind of have like a pocket so you can just keep stuff. Then 15 is and glove. We need gloves. You shouldn't use your bare hands to formulate cosmetics. It's not hygienic. Then 16, you have your packaging materials, which is very, very important. You should choose your packaging materials according to the products you are producing. So if you're producing a shower gel or a body cream or a body lotion, you should try and select the appropriate packaging for that product. Also, next is a pH meter or a pH paper. So if you can afford a pH meter, which is not too expensive, by the way, you should buy a pH meter or you can buy pH paper, just pH paper or pH strip to test the pH of your product and properly adjust the pH. Uh, just right beneath it is soap mold, so you can get uh, all these like really cute silicone soap mold, or you can get a loaf mold. So that is if you you are interested in making in making bar soaps. I didn't add like a soap cutter because as a beginner, I would say you can kind of improvise and use a knife to cut your soaps. Yes, you can use a knife, but as you get bigger, you can kind of like invest in a multi soap cutter, or you can buy a single cutter. But usually, it's like a bit pricey if you want to get a good one that will really serve you. So you can just use a knife when you are starting out. 13, you need a spray bottle with alcohol in it so that you can disinfect your work area and kind of work in a clean environment. Uh, 14, we have paper towels, right? You need to use paper towels to wipe down your work area and just to clean stuff. Then 15, we have a glass uh, funnel for filling bottles, for filling cosmetic bottles. That is if, if you, because you're starting small, right? You cannot afford to probably buy a filling machine. So you'd need a funnel. 16, you really really need a pen and paper it is very important apart from the fact that you already have your formula written down somewhere you need your pen and paper to be by your side just to note down stuff so it doesn't ought to always note down stuff lastly i forgot to add a frotter when making starting out and making skincare especially when you're testing out like a really small batch like when you're making a small batch, I would say you should stay between th between 30 and 50 grams. You should never make higher than that because it's, it's a test, right? In case it turns bad, you won't be losing so much. So you need a frotter. So instead of using a and uh, a stick blender, because, you know, when it's like 30 or 50 grams, it is really small, and then your blender cannot really do its job. But if you have a frotter, you can just easily use a frotter too evenly mix the product that is the end of this class thank you for listening i will see you in my next class my next class which is module now is really really important because that is where i teach you how to develop your own unique formula and how to calculate in percentage and after that class we start the practical classes further i will see you in my next class bye-bye